Hello. Now I just want to do a follow-up on this saw blade sharpener that I um, showed you earlier. Um, I've had time now to familiarise myself. I've done a few blades, got a feel of how it all works, um, and got a grip of the machine itself to find out just how it is to managing to do this thing so cheap when all the other ones are like £500 each. Um, to press, I haven't found anything downside of it that says they've made it cheaper. Um, all I will say is there's a few things that because I think of its value, it's not been as finely prepared and finely looked after. Um, all the castings, I've gone over and, and polished them all up and greased them all and oiled them all. They're all a little bit gritty, a little bit sharp in places, um, coarse in places, stopping things moving sweet and like I would imagine a 600 pound machine would do. This wasn't doing, but now everything is beautifully smooth and works as it should. Um, now, the other point I noticed with the machine, and it is the same with the expensive one, and that is that these spacers that you get to do the center of the blade, they've given you five of them, which I'm assuming is typical sizes. There is two typical ones, in my collection anyway, that they don't give, and that is 10mm bore and a 16mm bore. They're not here. Um, so, what I've actually done is taken nuts that will fit on the same thread and ground the outsides of them. This one is now the 16mm, and I'm just in preparation doing the 10mm one. Um, so that is a, a little added tip you may have to use if you've also got blades with bores that are not uh, equal to what the spaces that they give you. Now the other point, if you're going to get one of these machines from China, that you need to watch out for, and this is a serious issue, and that is this silly little plug adapter that they give you. If I can even get the thing apart, there you have the standard European style plug and here's an adapter three pin to fit ours. Now we know it's a machine it's gonna need earthing and we have it but there we don't have the earth pin they haven't provided one and it wouldn't even fit if it did. There's a hole there and a hole there. You could make something to go in there if you wanted but there's no instruction telling you to do it, so if you're not wise enough and notice this and start using it, you're going to be using a dangerous machine. So, start off with, even if you think it's nice and easy and use it and laziness and what have you, don't. Cut the plug off and replace it straight away. Don't use this plug system. You're not earthed, anything goes wrong, it's live, and you're handling that blade, that blade will be live. So get rid of that straight away. Okay. Now, the machine in general, I've found it to be very nice. It works very easy, it works very quick. Um, the functionality of it is all there. It's everything that's supposed to work, works. So now it's just a case of fitting it into my situation, my setup. So what I've done is I have like this attachment system on my bench. Um, for different things. This vice, very solid, can't go anywhere, but if I want to, it lifts out and it's gone. As quick and simple as that. I've got a hole there now, but I don't want a vice there. I've got a blanking plate, it just goes in. It's just a square plate and I put a plywood cap on the end which hooks into the bottom of the, underneath the uh, bench and just stops any prying of it. I've used the same principle for the grinder. So I can now very quickly Put the grinder, although it's quite heavy, 35 kilos. So you don't want to lift it about much. And there it is. Now it's not going anywhere, but I'm working on it, so that's good. And that is my attachment setup system. So now it's permanently mounted on there until I permanently remove it and want it somewhere else. Okay, so now I'm set up and for 
sharpening. Make sure you just plug this in here. Or turn it on yet. For sharpening, I have quite an arrangement of blades. As you can see here, battery tools, small blades, and um, what is that? 136 millimeter. 24 teeth, 10 millimeter ball. 10 mil. Very small ball. <coughs> Excuse me. Same with that one. 10 mil ball. Um, now these teeth, if you look at them, they're nearly all okay. I've got a chip one there, but it's not severely chipped. I've got a chip one there, not severely chipped. I'll still use them because they're only battery tools um, and it's only a trim saw. I'm not doing any really accurate work with them. So I can get a few more cuts out of that one yet once I sharpen it. This one, straight away, my standard 30 mil ball there, very good. Um, now this one is for an electric drill and the blade is absolutely ripped. It's been ripped to bits there. So that one needs to go. Um, I don't have a replacement for that, so I'll have to get one. Um, this one, the next electric one, the DeWalt one, the blade is a new blade, pretty much. Uh, with this one, as you can see, 16mm ball on that, which is the one I've just had to make the insert of it. Pretty standard. Now, a big Bosch handheld one. Blade been used for cutting joists and sleepers and such and left out in the weather and it's a mess. So we're not even going to bother touching that, that's going to go in the bin. That's okay, I've just got a very nice DeWalt one here. Um, standard again, 30mm blade, 30mm uh, ball um, and it's a series 40. So it's a good blade, it will do nicely for that sort. That one doesn't need sharpening, it's done. This one I've already done. That one going in the bin. Them two need touching up. Then I've also got other blades here for the other saws that need sharpening. Now these two are for my punch saw. The, the, the rail saw, the DeWalt rail saw. This is the original DeWalt blade off of it, which I took off. And these get used on laminate all the time. That's all it's used for really, because it's for the wall boarding. And laminate, very hard, blunts the blades very quick, even though it feels sharp. It's not. It's slow cutting. So it needs touching up. And this is the second one, which isn't a Makita. The one that's in there at the moment is a Makita. I'm just trying some cheaper versions. This is an FFX. And it worked very nice. This one, um, I think it was about 15 quid. That one's about 60. And yeah, I have a difference. So, this one, um, it worked very nice, so why not use it? But it, again, feels sharp, but it's not. It's just lost its edge. So I just want to quickly touch it, just to bring it back up to that sharpness again. So they need to be. Then here, I've got four more. Um, a couple of 10 inch ones, 250s. And a couple of um, two one spies, right there. Uh -huh. What are you telling me? No, uh, two one six. Right, so eight inch ones, eight and a half inch, pretty much. Right, so them two and them two, they also need sharpening. Um, for chop saws, this is for the table saw. Even though the table saws are three one five millimeter, these are two fifty millimeter. It goes down to that so if I decide I want to use a different blade, I don't have to stick to the same size blades. I can use what blades I've got. And I have these already, so I'm not going to waste them. They're good blades. Um, and these, they're all DeWalt ones, so they're reasonable types. Series 60, that one, and that's the Series 60. Um, so again, reasonably good blades. They just need the edges putting back on. Very blunt, very blunt. Okay, now like I said about the um, spacers on the 10 mil one, I'm still in the process of doing a spacer for it. Now what I did to start with, I just got a piece of thread, threaded bolt, shoved the nut on. Now the threaded bolt is the same as it is on the machine. So if a nut fits this, it fits the machine. Put a couple of nuts on. 
and lock them together. So once I've got them locked together, I then I put that into the drill press. And there it is now. You'll see I'm already in the process. There's why this point we've got 14 and a half millimeters there. Here I've got 12.2. So I need to get that down to 10 mil. Perfect, right, so that will now make us the collar. Just need it, the space that's needed. As you can see, it's a very thin sleeve now, is that? Yeah, stops any movement, that's it, any sideward play. Now I'll flick it over, the teeth want to come in from the front because on the blade you've got a slope at the back and now I guess in some ways you could actually utilise that slope I don't want to, I want to keep to the flat and keep everything straight and simple um, You allow for too many angles, you start getting things confused So, that's that collet done, ready to use from the 10 mil. Okay so starting off with we'll go to the small blade um, and what we're looking at is first thing this motor it has on here a tilt calibration make sure that when you're doing the teeth that is nice and square and dead centre don't let any pitch on these teeth not on the face of them on the top yes not on the face right on the smallest one you Main body is set so the pin is closest to the motor, and that's for small blades. Set it central, the angle is done with this, not with this. Then, with the blade on, once you've got the space on as well, I'm not going to do that for now, just quick demonstration of putting the blades on. You set this travel so that it won't allow the blade to touch the gullet when you're going backwards and forwards. So push it all the way forward and then move that until it brings it just back and it can't touch the gullet and then lock it with this one down here. Now that will not cut into the metal, it's solid. Then with this one, this is set against another tooth in line so that you can see that you're not going to go too far and grind away right past it because that's stopping you doing it too much you only want a little stroke to put the edge back on your next thing is the angle of the blade itself loosen this and you can turn this in relation with the grinding blade and what you're looking at is making sure you've got this angle squared with the tooth so there's no 
light showing there at all and that looks good to me now if you've got excellent eye vision you're good if not i use one of these um, a jeweler's eye and it just lets me see exactly if i'm right or not and that's good once that's there lock that one off now without, if the blade was clamped on that now would be ready and we would simply be going grind grind out turn grind grind out turn grind grind marking the first one with a pen so you don't go back over them again that is for the smallest of blades then swing this round again to there loosen that off and bring it out Now if it were me, I'd have put in a quick release on here, but then again, I suppose unless you're doing 20 at a time, you don't have to do it often. But a quick release, I'd have been able to here and get the next blade on a lot quicker. And here we've got a 315. And as you can see, it'll do a lot bigger. It'll actually do a 700 bull list. I don't have any blades that size, and I don't think I ever will. This is a 30mm spacer, sits in, you can get the blade, the right way around. It's a new blade, so I'm not going to be sharpening it, but it shows that, take it back off here, no. it just demonstrates how big a blade you can get on there. Looking good already. That's that. So that would be now set. Ready, let me just pull that back a little bit, that's okay, that's good. Lock that one off and then lock this down. And then we're ready. We're ready. And we set this pin again so we are touching a tooth just before it. Now one other thing. We give you an iron key. We're going underneath this and undoing this pin. That shoulder's too long from when they give you it. As you can see, a little bit discoloured there because I ground it down straight away. So that you can get it under, otherwise you are really fiddling to get it under. Grind a little bit off and then you can get it under much easier. And lock it up. Right, that's it. Okay, so that's my extremes from the biggest blade that I use to the smallest blade that I use. And you can see the machine will handle all of it and take a lot more than what I've got. Now I'm not going to do it, but I should just demonstrate. The pitching on this is for doing the top. The top of the blades you will all find alternately that way, that way as it's going across the teeth. You need to set that pitch on there and to do that you do it with this. Um, <coughs> Okay, that's correct. 
Right, you can see there, I'm coming in on this. As you can see there, the tooth, I'm coming in to there. Now the angle is at that point there. And I could do with being even more. Now you've got to stop down here underneath the stop. It's just an Allen key. And I find that doing the heads, for some reason, doesn't allow you to go far enough. Take the stop out. And I'll need to go a bit further. Now for me that is perfect. That is dead square on it. So I'm going to lock myself off at that point. Right, now the other thing is the pitch on this blade. Now you can see they're changing as it goes round. This one, shape that way. That one, that way. So what you've got to do is you've got to, with this, put that angle over. Now, it will probably be around 8 degrees. Now first, we can go that way, which gives us 8 degrees this side, which is there. That's correct. Right, and then setting that there like that, you could then go around and top every other one in turn Again, just a little bit. And you should only do this if there's any damage to them. Or if for some reason they're not sharpening, oops, wrong one. some reason they're not sharpening, then it's because that is off causing it not to sharpen. Um, but if you get the pitch of this wrong, you're making it blunt forever. So make sure that you've got that angle correct and the pitch correct. Once you've done all the ones that way, then bang it, 8 degrees the other side of zero and do them again this time the other set all the way around and that's topping simple ok so just for this uh, demonstration I'm just going to quickly sharpen up a small one and that will then show you it actually works Turn that around for a small one. Turn there. So, short one facing inwards, teeth against the blade, against the front of the blade, secure it into place. Then we'll start the alignment when nothing can move. Okay, blade in place. Right. Start off with forward, two power forward. the blade there, get the angle set, this is the bit I want to be accurate on because this is the bit that makes it sharp or not. Seems to be about that. Start off by marking tooth number one. That's where I'm starting. And here we go.
And that is that blade done. Very quick, very simple, very dirty, um, <clears throat> but sharp, that's the main thing. It's only a, a rough trim saw, but all the teeth look sharp. Now I'll put it back on the saw and we'll just give it a little test and see if it really cuts nicely. Cut it without any problem at all. One other thing is it makes your battery last longer if your blade's sharp. So that's one done. Okay, good. Okay, now let's have a close-up look at doing a big blade so you can get a full understanding of um, how it's all done, the angles and everything. And in case there's anything that's not clear to you, watching close-up, you might be able to answer that question for yourself. Very nice, um, teeth. Dirty on top and on the side, but the faces and the point that matters, beautiful. Excalibur, action step. So that's it, in basic, blade sharpener. Now you've seen it working, now you know it does work. Very simple, very easy. Um, and very cost effective because just a few blades, you've got your money back, 200 quid. Really, it doesn't take much to get your money back on that. And the machine is working very nice. It's a good, solid, it's all cast iron, good, solid machine. For its money, I can't complain. Right, okay, well that's me done here. Um, well, it's not, it's me done videoing. I've got a lot of work to do, all these blades. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. If you've got any questions, just stick them in the bottom. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Bye for now.